Hello everyone, Max is here. Uh, I know I haven't been posting new videos much lately because I've been super busy with my touring, with my recording, finally finalizing my new record, visiting Chicago, all that stuff. However, this is my new video and lots of people have been asking for it. So this is the video about my guitar collection. So I'm gonna show you all the guitars I own here in US. Sadly, I cannot show the other two I have in Ukraine, but I'm, I'm going to show you all of my guitars, quickly show you how they sound and what's cool about them. And I'll go like chronologically. So I'll be starting with my latest purchase up until my first professional guitar, my favorite guitar. If you want to know which guitar is it? You gotta watch the whole video. Don't even think about scrolling to the end. Watch the whole thing. So the first guitar I wanna show you is my latest purchase. I only got it like less than two weeks ago. I already played uh, two shows with this one. That's a Mike McCready signature Stratocaster, but the previous owner changed the pick guard and some metal parts. And I love it cause uh, McCready's guitar has this like, cause it was his own copy, you know, a copy of his guitar. So a couple of uh, knobs were like more than once like white. So it didn't quite match the overall uh, vintage vibe. Same with the uh, metal parts, you know? So the previous owner changed it to like some relic brand and it looks amazing cause it got all the rust and oxidation, all that stuff. So it's a great guitar. I paid like about half the price for it and it's like, <laughs> it's funny to judge the condition on a heavy rally guitar, but yeah, he gave me the car case, all the case candy, all the paperwork. It's a great guitar. It sounds amazing. <laughs> It's a great guitar, I love it. It looks amazing and uh, not that I needed it, but it looks so good, so I decided I need it. Well, the next guitar I'm about to show you is this wonderful 1958 Gibson LGO or LG0. Uh, also, I got it like about two months ago on the marketplace. And when I see something that says Gibson, 1958, I don't care if it's a, uh, obviously I love it to be a Les Paul for this price, you know, cause they go for like half a million dollars. Anyway, every, every time I see something cheap and it says Gibson, it should be mine. So that's a great guitar. It sounds wonderful. It's so old, but still in a great shape. It stays in tune relatively well. The action is perfect to me and it sounds good. It's it's great for blues like It's a nice guitar. And yeah, I haven't yet recorded it. I played a couple of shows with this one, but uh, it was some like dark bar gig where no one paid attention. I just wanted to play it myself to see how it feels. Sounds really good. I can't wait to record it later. Maybe on like my next album. We'll see. On to the next one. Gibson Les Paul Ice-T Burst Standard 60s. Oh my God, this is the guitar. This is the first Gibson Standard I ever owned, Les Paul. And uh, sounds amazing. It looks great. This is the guitar to have, I mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. Too much reverb though. So that's like the classic rock and roll tone, 
This is one of the best quality guitars I ever touched. Gibson Les Paul. I used it for my newest record because I've got it for about a, maybe half a year, maybe more actually. Maybe I kind of messed up my timeline because I guess the second guitar, I got it a little bit later. Anyway, I use it for recording. It's great. It's like a studio quality instrument. It's a touring quality instrument. I decided not to play it that often because it's not a cheap guitar. It's a high-end guitar and I hate it to be scratched, damaged, because already it's got some blemishes here and there, it's got some scratches. Because I play pretty aggressively. I'm thinking more about the performance rather than about uh, what's gonna happen to my instrument. But this guitar is so beautiful. Now I don't play it often. I play like only some of the gigs, like festivals and uh, something like that. But that's a great guitar. I'm so happy to have it. I wish, I mean, not a wish, I hope. I will never sell it. This is a great instrument. Okay, here we go. Next guitar I'm about to show you is this silver tone, the Jupiter model. And uh, this is not the original vintage one, it's a modern reissue. And as you guys know, I'm a silver tone artist. So I'm using the gear pretty often. This is a great guitar. I use this one actually pretty often because it's not that expensive. So it's an affordable guitar, but it sounds as good as an expensive guitar. Also because it's lighter. And this is the only guitar I have like a gig bag for it instead of the hard case. So when I'm carrying my stuff to a show, like the amps, the speakers and mixing boards and all that stuff, I can just put it on my back and my hands are still available. It sounds excellent. Again, it's a silver down. You can get it for like 500 bucks. That's ridiculous, right? It's so cheap, but look, it looks great. It's got all the sparkles and stuff. It's so light and it's got a lot of knobs. I'm not even using. <laughs> got two pickups. This one's pretty bass, right? And the treble one. Oh yeah, it's a great guitar. You can maybe you can even find them for cheaper use. It's a great guitar, and uh, yeah, I have it for about uh, I don't know, I'm kind of lost. Maybe like eight months, nine months, probably somewhere in between when I got my previous Gibson. Either of them was like the same, the same time period. So yeah, great guitar. Buy one if you don't have one. Right, on to the next one. This guitar is a Gibson J15. It's an amazing American-made Gibson guitar. Beautiful top, beautiful everything, beautiful sounding. I've got it like up probably last December or November, and I used it for my new album. So every every time you're gonna listen to my new album, it's on from the desert. And every time you hear acoustic guitar, you should know this is the guitar. And uh, it will also be featured in, a, in my music video from the song coming to LA because I brought this one to LA and we filmed it in a little bit in a hotel in downtown LA, a little bit on the Venice Beach. What's that? It's a great guitar. Sounds perfect. I love it. It sounds bassy, it sounds Gibson-ish, it sounds expensive. I I own quite a few good acoustic guitars like Martins and Gibsons. This one's my favorite. So yeah, so excellent guitar. I played it live a couple of times because it's got the output for, you know, it's got a pickup. <laughs> Yeah, 
again, amazing guitar. Let's go to the next one. Okay, the next guitar I wanna show you is this beautiful Gibson SG. Oh baby. Yeah, it was like a special model, I believe, or studio, something like that. But uh, there's like a guitar company, guitar shop, whatever you call it, in LA. What they do is they do this handsome relic. So look, it looks like it, it's got a story to tell. Not as much as the Magritte right? but you know what I mean. Also, it's got a Gibson and it's got this classic 57, classic 59, oh boy. Well, some classic humbuckers like PAF paths. And boy, it sounds, <laughs> this one looks and sounds so good. I mean, I used it for uh, all the heavy songs on my new album, like Electric Woman or, uh, I mean, this is not the actual song, I'm just fooling around, but I mean, what the hell is going on? Oh, <laughs> shit, this is the shit. I mean, way too much fun with this one. It can sound pretty bluesy too. I've got a few SGs in my life, including this. Uh, SG I had to sell back in the day, the one uh, I played with the Heavy Crawls during my European, one of my European tours when we opened for Uli John Roth, you know, the Scorpions guitar player. But this one, I mean, and because of it has Bigsby, I mean, I love guitars with whammies or Bigsby or whatever. Okay, I can, I can talk a lot longer, but let's go to the next guitar. The next guitar is this Epiphone Limited Edition Custom Shop Riviera P93. Uh, this is the first guitar I've got when I moved to US and it costed me like 300 bucks, which is crazy. And uh, it's got three pickups, it's got Bigsby, oh, it's got a broken string. Uh, yeah, I remember I played it like about last month. I have so many guitars, so I just put it back in that case and haven't taken it out yet. So uh, it's an amazing guitar. It has those like kind of cream vibes like Eric Clapton from the 60s. Yeah. It's a great guitar. I mean, I play quite a few shows with this one and uh, I, I believe I've recorded it too. Not quite sure, but it sounds good. It stays in tune. It's comfortable to play when it has all six strings, obviously. It looks so nice. That's a great guitar, especially for 300 bucks. All right, now I'm excited. We are approaching my top four guitars I have. Again, I rank them chronologically. So um, that means number one is my oldest guitar. So number four, this left-handed monster, because I don't know how to call it. This is a uh, American vintage reissue. It's a 1957. It was originally two-tone sunburst, but uh, the previous owner had some bullshit installed in it, like over here, you know, like some whatever thing and it's got some spots of uh, super glue, so I've got it refinished. And uh, it's signed. People keep asking me who signed those. And the first one was uh, Johnny Lang. Johnny Lang. And he played a show in Kiev. Then uh, I just took the body. I unscrewed the neck 
and I went to Berlin to see one of my favorite guitar players, Dole Bramhall II, and he signed it right over here. It's a massive signature. Then I've got this sticker with a Jimmy Vaughn signature. I mean, I know it doesn't quite match because I've got this Pelora, 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 Roid. Oh my God. I mean, I've got this Pigard and his sticker probably was meant to be on a like regular one. It's still pretty cool because I love Jimmy Vaughn and it still counts because this is the original autograph. This is Robert Cray. I met him in Phoenix. Robert Cray, he signed it. And Walter Trout. And I use this guitar for multiple Jimi Hendrix tribute nights because I'm a huge Jimi fan. It sounds so Jimi. <laughs> Anyway, this is a great guitar. I, I only pay like 500 bucks for it, which is ridiculous because they go for like more than two grand. Yeah, I paid something to have it refinished, but I mean, come on. I know it's left handed, so it's not quite comfortable to play because I keep touching the controls. But uh, I used it in the studio, I used it for multiple Jimi Hendrix tributes. I played uh, it in the US just once, I believe. And uh, but still, that's a great guitar. It sounds so good. It looks so good. I love this vintage type of stuff. It's pretty comfortable to play, even though. It was meant to be played like this, oops, and um, yeah, anyway, I'm happy to have this guitar. I need more signatures, like, I need Eric Clapton, John Mayer, I mean, <laughs> hopefully one day. Let's go to the next guitar. All right, my next guitar is my, is my Fender Stratocaster from 1999. I've got it from some guy who was, I believe, either... Uh, drug addict or something, maybe he had some money issues. Anyway, he sold it to me for cheap, he needed a lot of work, and uh, but that's an American-made guitar, right? That's a good guitar, it's an excellent guitar. It got quite a few mods. Firstly, uh, a looser from Kiev uh, put a lot of like foil inside to eliminate the hum. Then I changed the bridge saddles to Graftac. They extend your string life drastically. So basically having those makes your string live longer. Uh, the same with the knot. And uh, I changed the lipstick. I actually did it already in US like about a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago. It's the same or Duncan lipstick pickup. Because you know, if you play guitar, if you own a Strat, you probably know, nobody loves this guy. Nobody plays the middle pickup. Everybody's playing either the neck one. Or the bridge one. But this one, nobody paid attention. So nobody cares about it. So I installed it and it gives me this funky sound, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I love it. It's a nice guitar. Yeah, I've lost one of the one of the knobs, uh, tone control. So I just a uh, volume control. I'm sorry. So I just replaced tone over here because I'm not using tone controls almost never. So, but I do use the volume because I love this this trick. This is why I love strats, because you can do this. And yeah, it's a cool guitar. I record a lot of songs with this one on Searching for the Sun, uh, like out of my head. It was used on like Show Me the Way on my album Mesmerize. 
along with some other songs. It was used on my newest album that's that's still about to be released. So yeah, that's a comfortable guitar. I love when it's hot. So it gives me this Steve Ray Vaughan type of sound. All right, number two. I have it since 2013. This is a Harmony 1971 guitar. I purchased of my friend, guitarist for the key of bass band Straight Horns. He sold it to me. He knew I wanted it because I was well into garage rock, blues rock. I mean, I still am, come on. And I had this band, The Crawls, and I was a big fan of Jack White and Dan Arbach from the Black Keys. Those guys were big fans of uh, vintage guitars, but like not high-end vintage guitars, but like cheaper ones, like Silver Tones, K's, Dan Electro's, Harmonies. And uh, you don't find lots of those in uh, Ukraine, because you know, they are not that popular. So when I saw one, I wanted it so bad. And yeah, when, when the war started, when the invasion started in Ukraine, and eventually we had to leave to US with my wife and my cats, I could only bring four guitars. And trust me, that wasn't easy, because I had to tape two guitar cases in one. So I have two hands, four guitars, and a backpack, while my wife was carrying two cats and her backpack. That was all we owned. So there was no room for this guitar, because as much as I love it, Fenders and Gibsons cost more. So, But I received it in mail, thanks to my friend Roma. I received it about a week ago, and I already played two shows. No, one show, or two, doesn't matter, right? And uh, yeah, one show, one show. And oh my God, <laughs> it has so many memories because I used it with the crawls throughout the whole career, then the heavy crawls. I brought it to Europe for our Euro, Euro tours, like first European tour, and I believe any other one. It was always like my slide guitar. So we always been used for open G or open E tuning slide, you know, like for songs like It Didn't Matter or Backseat Blues. But now it's in standard tuning. So let's hear how it sounds, because I mean, let's hear the clean sound actually. Ooh. guitar dirty but I love it it's great for for a lot of actually genres of music I mean if I can mess up with some space echo or some delay I mean excellent for what I used to do especially for slide guitar and I'm happy to have it now it's got so many memories so thanks for sending it to me and how about I'm gonna show you my number one guitar <laughs> The 
this is my number one, my all time favorite longest tone guitar that I have for like 12 years now, since 2012. It was my first American made guitar, first Gibson. It was purchased with the help of my grandma. I sold my Epiphone and she added some money. So I was able to buy this one. And this is my favorite guitar ever since. Even though I have more expensive guitars, I paid a thousand bucks for this one back in 2012. It's got some cool mods and stuff. And I love its slight weight because it's empty inside, just like, <laughs> just like you. Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, it's empty inside, so it's not as heavy as a Les Paul, the backbreaker. Because I swear, when I play those Fargo shows at the Roadhouse, either way, using my Les Paul, my neck, my shoulders, my back, ever since, or even my knees, these guitars are heavy. This one's lightweight, but still a Gibson. It sounds so freaking good. It's got those. Seymour Duncan pickups, which are three in one. So you could pick like a humbucker or a single or P90s. That's, that's so cool. Also, it's got this uh, kill switch type of thing. Like... Yeah, I need some lubing probably because I haven't been playing much. It's got the piezo pickup. You know, to emulate the acoustic guitar and yeah, uh, improved bridge by Schaller, German brand, and uh, Gibson Deluxe tuners. I used to have Schaller Deluxe, but during my tour uh, after the show in Czech Republic, fell down and one of the tuners broke. So I've got to replace the whole thing. Well, I used it for every record i ever produced since turnaround one so basically only one album was released before turnaround if you know the band let me know if you know it i'll check your knowledge so turnaround first and second the crawls and the heavy crawl solo records max toasty all solo records so this is my main guitar it was well played well toured and because uh, when I bought it, it was like I bought it of someone, but it was like barely played, it looked like brand new. It was brighter, so I don't know, probably it faded out because of my sweat. Because I can see the acid and oxidis oxidation from the sweat and from playing it for so many shows. So, yeah, that's a beautiful guitar most memories i have with this one i hope it will stay for my family at my family forever like if i ever gonna have kids hopefully they never sell it unless it's like museum named after me but i've got to work hard to own this so this is the the ultimate crawl store on this one A Gibson Les Paul Studio, I believe it's a 20, 2009, not 2010. So when I got it, it was like three years old. Now it's got all the road worn. I played it actually in July. I played it on July 4th festival because I got this opportunity to play both main stage and later the heritage stage, uh, the smaller stage at this festival, which was attended by thousands of people. And we did all original set including songs like I don't know from the Searching from the Sun album and I mean a song for my upcoming album like Down Hard and Blue Fiend. and all the good stuff so yeah I do play it at times for major shows and yes this is my number one guitar I still have one guitar which is my very first one but it's in Ukraine it's a 
Squire Stratocaster. So it's a cheap guitar. It was the first guitar, first electric guitar I ever owned. I was 18. I just graduated from my first year in college in university, Kiev Linguistic University. And I had really good marks, good grades, whatever we call it in America. And uh, my dad got it for me to kind of congratulate me with uh, finishing my rookie year. So I still have it in his house. I don't play it, but I do have it. So that would be my number one guitar. As again, this top list uh, means the number one is the longest on guitar. But this is both longest owned and both my favorite. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you watched it until the end and you found out something new. Yeah, I've used a lot of guitar pedals as well. Maybe next time I'll do a video about it. I played in my Pro River Bamp because my main amp is a Hot Rod Deluxe and it's in my car because I've got a gig later tonight. So I've got to hurry. And yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. I love reading all the comments and talk to my fans, friends and subscribers, whatever, who you are, my enemies. I don't have ones, of course. And yeah, thank you. I'll see you soon.